costs less. Heavy showers in many areas, however it'll be mainly dry to the south and west with just the odd shower. Lowest temperatures tonight of 0 to 4 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. The Football Show on Off The Ball. Brought to you by the new and improved Boyle Sports Bet Builder. Now with 44 markets to choose from on every match. I'm prepared to end it and I can't well, do it then. Completely again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. You're very welcome along to Thursday's football show, a football show with a difference on a Thursday night because John Giles is going to be with us for the hour reflecting on a pretty remarkable week of European football and it's getting better it seems for the English clubs. We already have an all English Champions League final. Looks as though it will be an all English Europa League final. Chelsea through Ruben Loftus-Cheek lead Eintracht Frankfurt by a goal to nil at Stamford Bridge. Second half just underway, Chelsea 2-1 up on aggregate. While at the Mestalla, it's one all between Valencia and Arsenal. It was the Spanish side who took the lead on 11 minutes. Kevin Gamero with the goal. But Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with a brilliant equaliser on 17 minutes means Arsenal lead 4-2 on aggregate. So it looks as though it will be an all-London clash in Baku in the Europa League final. Unfortunately, Ireland are out of the European Under-17 Championship, which has been hosted here in this country. They were taking on Belgium this evening, watching the match with Stephen Doyle. Ireland came from behind to earn a draw against a classy Belgian outfit. However, the Czech Republic beat Greece 2-0 to progress to the last eight with the Belgians. Ireland were still in the game at half-time, thanks mainly to keeper Jimmy Corcoran, who pulled off some excellent saves in the first half, while the home team could only fashion a few half-chances. Corcoran then pulled off a super save at his near post in the 65th minute, but the man who took the original shot, Jeremy Doku, fired the rebound back into the six-yard box for Chris Kalulika to slot home. Ireland fought back though and in the 74th minute a superb James Furlong free was volleyed in at the back post by defender Timmy Sabuwali. A tip of the hat to Irish centre half Andrew Omabamadeli who made some excellent blocks in that second half but in the end neither side could find a winner. Ireland won, Belgium won the final score. Stephen Doyle at Tala Stadium. Yeah, so disappointing evening for Collie O'Brien and his players. Ireland out of the Under-17 Championship. So we're going to talk to John Giles about the week that was. We didn't think anything could top Anfield on Tuesday night. Well, Spurs may well have just managed it last night. It's back out to Shona. Zirk. Lovely ball. I want to say happy St. Tottering Day. I know it gets a bit boring celebrating it every single day. Yossi Ben Ayer, a well finished off Tottenham Hotspur's Champions League dream once and for all. And when you go into them clubs, you've got to go and change them. The players, are a good majority of them, are not good enough, so you've got to go and change them. Typical Tottenham performance, they obviously uh, will let you down most times. by Dolberg. Better than that, he found Ziyech, who finds the net. Ajax are on their way to the Champions League final. The home has not been so good. They haven't won any of the last three home games, which gives Spurs a little bit of hope. On to Deli Alley. Can he play it across to Ericsson? Lucas Moura's running in now. Lucas Moura! Spurs are still in this. What a save from Andre Onana! Lucas Moura! Ajax fans are looking at the clock, they're trying to count down the seconds. Son. Sissoko. Comes to Deli Ali. Through to Lucas Moura. One in. Lucas Moura has fired Spurs through to Madrid. To the Champions League final.
So what a week it has been from Vincent Company's rocket on Monday night to one of the greatest nights in Liverpool's history on Tuesday and then to top it all off the 95th minute winner from Lucas Moura to send Spurs into their first ever European Cup final last night. Just a bit to get through, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need a couple of hours, Nathan. You enjoyed it so far this week? Oh, it was brilliant. Brilliant. The whole weekend, you know, from the... Uh, obviously the race for the, the Premiership, to go into the Champions League uh, to get the two matches that we got. You know, I was talking to somebody today, like if, 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 you, if you'd written it on Monday, nobody would believe it, you know? If you're writing a novel about what, what happened in, in, the, yeah. in the three matches, but particularly the last two, it's just incredible. Let's talk about Liverpool first then, and you say the whole week actually, it's something that maybe hasn't been spoken about. How Liverpool were able to get to that level on Tuesday night, considering the stress of the title race, that they had to go to Newcastle, they had injury problems, yeah. they left it late, and the mental toll that that should bring on them. Mm -hmm. Was it the fact that actually it seemed like a hopeless cause, 3-0 down, that gave them a bit more freedom? Uh, well, f well, first of all, you mentioned the mental uh, turmoil, as it were. But when you're in the position that Liverpool are in, uh, Nathan, actually, it's not mental turmoil. It becomes part of the norm, because that's what you have to do. Uh, and being good pros as they all are, uh, you want to be in that position. You know, this is not a situation where, oh God, here we've got another match. This is where you want to be. Mm. You're a footballer. You want to be playing for these big titles. And, that's what, that, that, and Klopp has obviously got, a, got a, 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 a thing among the squad, the atmosphere, because he's into it in a big way. Uh, and he's got players around him that he's brought in and he's created over the last three years, who want to be in the position that they're in. It's not, oh God, look at the position, this, we've got to this match. This is a match they want to play in. This is a match that you dream about playing in when, you, when you're a certain type of professional. Uh, and that's what they did. So it's, 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 not, a, it's not a chore. Yeah. It's where not a chore. Be. It's where you want to be, really where you want to be. And, that's where they, and, that's, and they've done it, you know. They, they, at Newcastle, they did what needed to be done in the end. And uh, the other night, uh, of course, uh, absolutely brilliant to, to, to do what they did. Uh, I'd have to say now I was very disappointed with Barcelona uh, and their approach to the game. But that's nothing to do with Liverpool. They were up for it in a way that they, they should be up for it and well deserved to do it. On Liverpool then, was this a performance more reminiscent to Liverpool of a year ago where it was emotion, it was energy? that maybe the control that they've been able to bring to a lot of their Premier League games, they didn't need to show that. They could actually just go and, as you often say, the go-go-go that Jurgen Klopp yeah. brings, they could actually just let loose because they had, in some ways, nothing to lose. Um, well, they had something to lose, Nathan. I mean, they, they, they've got to keep chasing Man City. You know, if they lose at Newcastle, it's all over. Mm. So they have a lot to, lot to do there. The Champions League, three down, a lot to lose there as well. Uh, so all, all, all more credit to them to do what they're, what they're doing. But again, in Klopp's, Klopp's case, he's, 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 he's done really, really, led, led them really well. Because it all comes from the manager. You know, if the manager gets nervous and does all this, now, well, then, then, then the, the team will, will follow. But where he hasn't, he's been positive about everything he's done. He's doing his go, go, go. It's, it's, it's second nature for him to do that. And the players follow. I mean, that's what makes great managers. You know, if you don't have a good manager, you can have a terrific lot of players at Barcelona have, and they're not going to do it. And he's insisted on doing it, and doing it the way he's, he's done it. So, he, like, he wants to be there as well. I mean, what, what a position to be in, to be chasing trophies like that. And some teams fighting against relegation. Yeah. And that's real pressure. You know, when you're up there in, in, in doing what they did, it's, it's, it's a joy to go out and play and, and get the results that they're getting. It was clear from quite early that Liverpool weren't going to take a step back. There was even Andy Robertson with a little push on the back of Messi's head in the first minute or mm. so. Fabinho had quite a, either a full-blooded type of tackle you want or a reckless challenge, whichever way you want to look at yeah. it, in the first five or six minutes. Yeah. And then they I get don't, the I don't goal, actually, I don't agree with that, actually, United. I mean, Robertson was foolish doing what he was did, and Spinio was a little bit... You don't have to do that to prove what you're going to do. Like, when you're doing it in a professional way, you get stuck in and you do it... The way. They, they didn't... They didn't make a difference to the game. I don't... You, you, I'm not, you, you don't think it, 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 it puts into Barcelona's head that... Either, do they want the fight? Do they want the physical side no, but, of it? No, but you can do that without doing something silly. 
and like what Robertson did, in my opinion, was silly. It could, it could, it could have been come back on him, might have got a yellow card. You don't have to do silly things. I mean, actually, part of the game is when you're in a situation like that is to keep the head. You know, that's, that's one of the hard parts in, in, in a match that means so much, to be really professional and keep your head. So what, what Liverpool did actually from the start, it wasn't so much what, what Robertson did or Fabinho, it's what they did all round, where they generally went after the ball, created their chances, and, and Barcelona, for some reason or other, weren't prepared to match them. I mean, Barcelona didn't turn up now. I mean, a huge disappointment. And that's nothing to do with Liverpool, because Liverpool did what they had to do and won it and deserved, deserved to do it. But I'd have to say I was really, really disappointed with Barcelona's approach to, to, to this particular game. What was their approach? What do you think well, they, they were didn't trying play. to do? Didn't play. I mean, Suarez was acting the bows. He was gone. He would never kick the ball. Even Messi wasn't up for it. You know they let they let they let Liverpool t- totally dominate them. And Liverpool good luck to them. They played they, they played great. I'm not taking anything away from Liverpool at all. They were terrific. They played in a way that you would expect them to play. Barcelona certainly didn't play the way I I expected them uh, to play. They were, they were very unprofessional. I mean, you take the last goal for example, the winning goal. Like there was six or seven or eight players with their back to the ball, mm. allowing Origi. And the six-yard line to score from that position, Nathan. I, I just so what, what does that suggest? Is this an it arrogance that, that they've done it all before and they're three 0 up? I know at that stage no, it's it's three no. all and Liverpool have got back into it. Now, was their approach to the game? You see, if you like these are professionals and some of the top professionals, best best players in the world. Whether you're three up or three down, Nathan, you approach the game in a professional manner. There's no well, we're going there with a three three nil win and, and therefore we can take it easy. Professional players don't do that. They're there to, and they get the job done. Whatever way they approach it, and you have to go back to the coach and the manager, whoever it's be, who, who obviously didn't insist or have them in the right frame of mind for that particular match. I don't know, but what I do know, and, and football is great for that, what, what's right or wrong manifests itself on the pitch. Liverpool were up for it in the way that they should be up for it. They were absolutely brilliant in their professional approach. Barcelona weren't. I don't know why but they certainly weren't up for it in the way that they should have been up for it. Do you often see that? I know it's a Champions League semi-final, so it's such an important game, it's hard to think that a team wouldn't be up for it and be properly prepared. But with that 3-0 lead, is it, is it just some sort of a, an arrogance? Well, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't right. But that comes from the manager. But these are top pros that night. And when you win a match 3-0 the previous week, and don't forget, they were quite fortunate to win a 3-0. No professional football, real, real professional guy, it's enough. It doesn't happen that way. You go out with, with an approach. We're going to get stuck into these guys. We're going to make it really difficult for them. And they didn't do that. I don't know why, but you'd have to bring it back to the manager or the coach, whatever he is, that he's the one that, that dictates this is the way we're going to approach the game, as Klopp did for Liverpool yeah. in, in a perfect way. I know Liverpool had to pull it back. But when you're a professional footballer like these Barcelona players, you don't take anything for granted. If you're winning 6-0, you don't take it for granted. The attitude should be gone out, right, we're going to get stuck in it. We're going to give them nothing, absolutely nothing. They didn't have that approach, Barcelona. And Liverpool were great. Liverpool were up for it. They did their job, did it well and deserved it. But again, you go back to the last goal, the winning goal. I mean, you couldn't have done, from Barcelona's point of view, you couldn't, couldn't have done anything worse than what they did. Mm. You know, Shankly had a saying in football, when the ball goes dead, you come alive. Well, they were a long time taking the corner kick and they still weren't ready for it. You know, I, I, I just can't work it out at all. I, I couldn't imagine Liverpool giving the goal away like that. They were up for the game quite rightly and they, they were unlucky. I thought they were unlucky last week to lose the game 3-0. Barcelona would know that as well. The coach would know that as well. So there shouldn't be any complacency going into a match that you were, you were, you, you, it, you did well to win three 0 when you didn't deserve it. To, to make sure, and the players themselves would know, and everyone knew what was coming from Liverpool. Exactly. I don't. I just. I just don't make it out. It's. It, I can't make it out that the, the the And you have to go back to the coach. He's the one that sets the, sets the tone. Liverpool were up for it in the right way. That goes back to Klopp. They're very positive, and and the way they approached it, the physical physical aspects of it was, were great. Liverpool were terrific. And that's down to the manager getting them ready for that particular match. Whatever happened at Barcelona, I think the manager or coach, whatever they call him now, definitely wasn't doing his stuff. Is there anything Messi could have done to no, Messi turn wasn't the tide? Even, no, Messi wasn't even up for it. 
oh, this is what I can't understand. I mean, Suarez was, was, was a disgrace, really, on the night. He was kicking more Liverpool players and acting the bowsy rather than playing. But even Messi in the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, didn't get a kick of the ball. And he didn't seem to, he didn't seem to be up for it yeah. in a way that would, you would expect him to do it. Uh, uh, you obviously can't question... Messi's greatness over the course of no. his career, but where he is right now, then, like often you talk about, you know, great players make it happen for themselves. They don't need; they inspire those around them. Mm. Like, does that hugely disappoint you then? With what you saw from yeah, Messi definitely. on Tuesday yeah, night? Definitely, as we've always gone on about Messi's one of the greatest players ever. On 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 the match against Liverpool, the other he wasn't. He didn't impose himself on the game, uh, Nathan. It wasn't as somebody was marking him tightly. He couldn't get it. He just seemed to be a bit. Dozy, you know, like he wasn't, like he should have been demanding the ball like he normally does. He, he wasn't doing that, but neither would the Barcelona team. I, ju- I just, I can't give you, I can't give you a reason for it. I just don't understand how they could be so lethargic in a match that is a hugely important game to do what they did. And Liverpool, good luck to them, took full advantage of it. Liverpool did their stuff in mm. the way that they should do their stuff. Very professional. They, they set a pace, which was great. And Barcelona didn't didn't respond, but that's up to them. That's nothing to do with Liverpool. Liverpool just have to do what they have to do, and they did it and did it extremely well, extremely well. There was obviously a lot of individual performances from Liverpool, and one of those who has been most highly spoken about was Trent Alexander-Arnold for his quick thinking for the corner kick, for yeah. spotting the opportunity at just twenty years yeah. of age in but, a situation but, but, like that. But funny enough, Nathan, it wasn't that quick. Do you know what I mean? If you go back on on it, he, he, mm. he, he, he worked the corner kick. Then he went over to the ball. Then he went away from Wait. the ball, right? Because I think uh, uh, Shakira was it was was was, was maybe coming short, going yeah. To, going to take it or whatever it was. So the, so he didn't take it. He didn't get the ball down straight away before they got back. I mean, Barcelona had ages and ages of time to get back. It wasn't he got onto the ball quickly. He got onto the ball not quickly. He, mm. he, he walked away from it. Then he came back from it, and Origi was still on. After all that, I mean, if you take it sharply, really, really quick, quick, you'd say, oh, fair, they cut them out. But it was just, I, I cannot believe for a, a, a team of their experience, Barcelona, to approach that particular goal or defend it or not defend it in the way that they did. It wasn't a quick corner kick. It was a very clever corner kick. Good luck to Alexander. Very, he picked it out. But, he, he, but he, I, I tell you, he was amazed when he went ball to the, back to the ball for the second time. That he got away. That Origi is still on his own inside the six-yard line. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just incredible. And good luck to him, he did. He picked the ball out well. And to be fair to Origi, he put it in extremely well. Very, very good. I'm, I'm not taking anything against from, away from Liverpool. Liverpool were excellent and did what needed to be done yeah. from their point of view. I just find it amazing from a team and experience of Barcelona to respond or not respond in a, in a way that you would expect them to. The performance of Alexander Arnold and Robertson this season and their statistics in terms of the amount of goals they set up is is record breaking at this stage. And I guess with goalkeepers, we know there's been a sort of transformation in what's expected of a goalkeeper, and they now have to play a bit of football as well. Have you seen a transformation of what is expected from fullbacks from the best teams in the Premier League now as well? That traditionally, and maybe now you would look at Trent Alexander Arnold and think defensively is suspect. Whereas actually, does that matter as much to fullbacks well, anymore? Well, well, to be fair, I think Alexander is suspect defence. He's very, very good for going forward. Now, in relation to Robertson, Robertson is very good defensively as well. Mm. I think he's the complete fullback, and he's been very, very, very good. Uh, I think when Liverpool are under pressure, I don't think Alexander is is a good defender. Uh, he is very good going forward, as we saw. He's a good cross with the ball, but Robertson does that as well as defending. Uh, so. I think there's more emphasis on fullbacks now than ever before because become wing backs now who are expected to defend, but it's mostly to release the balls. And Liverpool do it extremely well and have, have created an awful lot of goals from the two the, the two players. There's no doubt about that. And 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 he did, Alexander for the for the the, the winning goal did respond in the right way. You know, like he had he, it wasn't a quick one, but it was quick enough to be quicker than any of the Barcelona yeah. players responding. And didn't respond in the way that they did. So they are they're great, uh, they're terrific players for Liverpool in the way that they play. Because again, with Klopp, I've just described him as a one trick pony with a very good trick, and I still believe that. He doesn't see, he sees them attacking all the time. No doubt. But he has, he sees, in the personality he's improved the defendant. He's got a goalkeeper now that he didn't have before. He's got Van Dijk come in the centre of defence. He's got Robertson, who wasn't in the team. Arnold has come into the, mm. into the team as well. You've got Gomez as well to come in. 
at the right time. So the actual personnel of the, the defending has improved. There's no doubt about that because he got, he's got really, really good defenders in. That were, we had Mourinho in one time, he had the dodgy goalkeeper, he didn't have Van Dijk when they were, were doing what, what they were try, trying to do, what, they, what he wanted them to do. Now he has those players and the, the attacking is just as good as it was, if not better. Yeah. Uh, than a year or two back. It is some testament to the power of Jurgen Klopp's coaching ability, how far he's brought Liverpool, that you look at them right now and they're deservedly in a Champions League final for the second year in a row, third year out of four, they're in a European final, they're right there in contention mm. with a record points total to win a Premier League title as well. And you look at the actual players who started the last night, no Salah, no Firmino, Divock Origi, who was on loan at Wolfsburg last season, Shakiri, who was relegated with Stoke, yeah. James Milner, who's probably in the latter stages of his yeah. career. Jordan Henderson, who people had big question marks. Alexander Arnold's a young guy. Robertson was relegated with Hull. Like, the, his ability as a man manager to bring players to another well, level. Yeah, well, he has done that, uh, Nathan. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Robertson was, 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 a, was, was a very good player at Hull. Well, he obviously picked him up because he was, he was in his contract with a relegate, which is great. And you've got to, you've got to get those players. The same with Shakiri. Uh, in that, but but of course, when you when you're in the position of Liverpool, you have to give credit to the manager. He is what he is, and uh, I, I still go back to the, the one trick pony. I don't mean it, it in, in a bad way. I think it's a very very good trick what he does, and and he's brave in what he does. I don't think he sees any danger. You know, I think when he's gone out to play, he's going to have the full back bombing forward. He's going to have the players doing this. I'm working hard, honest. Mm. I mean, that was the big thing between the two teams the other night. Liverpool were honest. Barcelona weren't honest yeah. in, their, in their approach to the game. And of course, Clough deserves all the credit he's getting for what, doing what he's doing. He's improved the team gradually. Uh, and I think what he does is, I don't think he pays too much attention to the opposition. If he gets his players doing what he wants them to do, because when Liverpool are winning 1-0, you don't see them like a lot of teams getting tactical and sitting back mm. and bringing the defensive player on. It's go again. Go again. Is that what you want as a player? Because, funnily enough, one of the issues as they start to come out now around Arsenal and Unai Emery is that the players have felt at Arsenal that he's too obsessed with the opposition, that they spend so much time thinking about what they're going to do and setting up to counter it that they don't get to express themselves. They're changing tactics all the time because they're wondering what the team they're playing are going to do. As a player, do you... I guess you you always want to know something about the opposition. Do you want a manager who says... This is our style of play. We impose it no matter what. Yeah, well, that's my belief on it. I, I, I've, always, I've always felt in, in my management, managerial career that if you do what you want to do, right, right then it, it, it it's, goes against the opposition. Now, if you plan to play against the opposition, then you're giving them credit for doing what... Whereas if you have... There's only one ball on the pitch. And if you do what you want... To, I've never played in a team that was 100% perfect in what they did, right? And I remember years ago, we, when I was playing for Leeds, we were a well-organised team. We played Swansea, who were in the fourth division, and the scout came up to see us the week before, and the big headlines said, I've seen weaknesses in the Leeds team, right? What about his own team? You know, like, if you put everything right in your team that you want to do, you will naturally expose the weaknesses of the opposition, rather than saying, well, the opposition is weak, on that, this yeah. is obviously if you've got a bad left back, then you you, you try to do it. but but you, putting getting your own th- team in order. And I played with a very good team at Leeds. We never got it hundred percent right. But if you do what you want to do, then you'll expose the opposition, and 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 that's what Klopp does. I don't think he, I don't think he concentrates on the opposition at all. This is what we're going to do, as you say with Arsenal, with the Arsenal players complaining. If you keep talking about the opposition what they're doing wrong or what the weakness in there are. What about your weaknesses? If you put your own weaknesses right, you will naturally expose the weaknesses of the opposition. Yeah. So concentrate on what you have to do. And I guess to be a great team, you need that belief. Of course. Well, you get the belief with the results. Mm. You know, but you, 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 obviously you pay respect to the opposition. You corner kicks as well as good. And you do all that. But the basic stuff in playing, if you get your team to play the way you want them to play, that's your job to do. You, yeah. can't, you, can't, you can't legislate for the opposition all the time. You respect them, but you have to do what you want to do yourself. And there's only one, again, to go back, one ball in the pitch. You, I've never played in a team that was 100% right in every match, Nathan. Never. There's always something you could do better, you yeah. could do better, regardless of the opposition. Do you know what I mean? If you've got playing the left back against you, that's a bit weak. If you play really well, you will naturally expose it. You don't have to go out of your way 
to expose them. And if you've got weaknesses, right, you'll be naturally exposed. So what you do is you put your own weaknesses, put your own team in order as much as you possibly can, and then you go from there. And the players believe in that as well. When you look at the level Liverpool got to on Tuesday night against Barcelona and they've got to consistently this season in the Premier League, are you surprised how far Jurgen Klopp has been able to bring them from where they started, from when he first took over? I I wouldn't say I was surprised, uh, Nathan, because it it hasn't done it overnight. I mean, he's been there three years. Mm. And, I mean, we did have a spell with Liverpool where Mourinho was playing at left-back. They didn't have a goalkeeper. They didn't have uh, Van Dijk, you know. And, and he, he's put that right over a period of time. So he's, he's, he's at the position now, uh, after three years, that he's recognised what, what, what wasn't good enough to put it right to where he is at this moment. Yeah. And that's good management. But it didn't happen overnight. It never does happen over. Very, very seldom happens overnight. Anyway, so he gets full credit for doing and recognising. It took him a while, I think, a couple of the things to recognise that this, this, these are not good enough. But he's put it right now. And they're reaping the rewards for it. You know, the other night they were they were excellent in in, in the game that they had to win uh, three goals down. And Barcelona didn't turn up. That's their business. He can only do what he can do, and he did it extremely well. There's a sort of fatalism, I think, among Liverpool supporters because they've been so disappointed so often over the last three decades that if it doesn't happen this season, it'll never happen. No. Do you look at them and look at that team and where they are and think they're going to be here for the next two, three years oh, definitely. contending? Definitely, definitely. I mean, you. Like this time last year, they weren't in the position they're in now, Nathan. So that's a huge improvement. So it, it, it's on the up and up all the time. And I mean, what he's doing, at Klopp, it's not a fluke. He's got a good squad of players now. He can he can maybe get another couple in in the in the summer. But like to do what they did, I mean, the record number of points, and they still haven't won it. That's because Manchester City are doing what they're doing, which has made it a great great chase. But the, but all you can look at is your own team, and Klopp has definitely improved his team since last year and certainly since he took over the club in a big way. So they're going in the right direction, there's no doubt about that. And I think he's done, he has definitely done a terrific job with them. All right, we'll talk a bit more about what might happen on the final day of the season and, of course, about Tottenham's victory against Ajax last night. But we need to take a quick break. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same-day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. For great savings on the biggest brands in home appliances, visit Harvey Norman this weekend. Get the Indesit 13 place setting dishwasher for just €259, saving you €60. Or get the Hoover fridge freezer with A-plus energy efficiency for just €273, saving you €31. You can even get your new appliance delivered and installed using one of our delivery and installation packages. Visit Harvey Norman in-store or online. A storage story brought to you by Nesta. So why are you putting your drums into storage? Well, I had the drums in the spare room at home and I had to move them here to Nesta. 50 square feet. Perfect. Any particular reason? Well, we were going to have a baby. Yeah. But we had a one, a two, a three. (laughs) So triplets moving in, uh, drums moving out. Nesta Storage. Make room for life. At Carphone Warehouse, our five-day flash sale is back with an exclusive freebie deal you won't find in any other store. Get the Samsung Galaxy S9 free, plus a Google Home Mini free, and a 64-gig memory card that doubles your memory for free on a 40-euro-month plan with Vodafone, Ireland's award-winning mobile network. But hurry, this exclusive one-of-a-kind offer ends Monday, and only when you switch at Carphone Warehouse, the home of the networks. Any network, any phone, any plan. Only Carphone Warehouse. T's and C's apply. Offer subject to 24 month contract. He tears the place apart. He can't remember where he last had them. Needs them for the telly. He lifts up the sofa. (coughs) Okay. Wow, Barry. What? Your glasses, Barry. They're on your head there. Oh. Humans are forgetful. So use the M50 Quick Pay app from eFlow to prepay the toll before you set off or receive reminders to make a payment after your trip. Do you have enough to be forgotten? Download the M50 Quick Pay app today. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Welcome back to the football show. Maybe that all London Europa League final isn't as nailed on as we thought. Arsenal the teams are going to be there. They're 3-2 up against Valencia at the Mestalla. 6-3 up 
on aggregate. So Valencia need to score four times in the final 15 minutes to have a chance of progressing. And we've seen some pretty special and unexpected things over the last couple of nights. I think Valencia scoring four in the final 15 minutes is probably stretching it a little bit too far. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang has scored twice for Arsenal. Alexandre Lacazette won in between. Kevin Gamero with two for Valencia. But the other game is the interesting one now because it's Chelsea won, Eintracht Frankfurt won on the night. 2-2 on aggregate. Ruben Loftus-Cheek gave Chelsea the lead on 28 minutes, but Luka Jovic has equalised five minutes into the second half. So 15 minutes remaining at Stamford Bridge, and that one, as it stands, is heading for extra time. 1-1 on the night, 2-2 on aggregate, and Arsenal 3-2 up on the night. They lead 6-3 on aggregate. So John Giles is still with us in studio, a little bit later than usual, for the football show tonight, which means we've plenty of time to talk about the week that was, and it is an all-English Champions League final. Spurs will be the opposition for Liverpool, their first ever European Cup final, and whatever about it looking unlikely for Liverpool ahead of the second leg, it looked highly unlikely for Tottenham at half-time half in the second yeah. leg when they had to score yeah. three goals. Was this a better comeback, actually? I know you don't it's, like very, it's very difficult to know, uh, mm. Nathan. I mean, both is it more th difficult because Jurgen Klopp had a full week to prepare for Barcelona t and they were at home to score these three goals, whereas actually Mauricio Pochettino had to react mid-game when things weren't going well? Yeah, it, well, it, it, it's difficult to uh, pick anyone. Bo both comebacks were great. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I think uh, uh, from Pochettino's point of view, he did make a couple of changes. Uh, it looked bad for them at half time, but the, 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 I'd say what might have been in his head and the players' head. I'm sure he reminded them: this team haven't been great at home. I, didn't, I think uh, they're a young team, and I think they're all or nothing. I don't think they were experienced enough to tie the game up. You know, even in the second half, they hit the upright themselves, didn't mm. they? So it was: uh, you go, we go. Uh, it wasn't like, the control of no, the team with no, a three-nil no, lead. I, I don't. I don't think they were capable of doing that. I don't. I don't think that they're a young team. And if you look at their home record in this particular competition, you know, I don't think they, they, they were good at home at tying the game up. They were better away from home. Uh, but they are young. Uh, but I think an experienced couple of players on the pitch at, from half-time onwards uh, wouldn't have necessarily been go, go, go for another goal. They would, have, they would have been experienced enough to tie it up. And I don't think they had those type of players. Uh, and again, that's not taken away from Spurs because Spurs had an awful lot to do uh, to, to, to win that particular game and they did it extremely well was it Morey? Lucas Morey yeah Lucas Morey hat, hat trick you know and uh, like I, I remember when he started playing for Spurs I, I didn't he, he was too but much of a dash for my liking and never seemed to be composed about anything and of course that pays off in certain circumstances and it certainly did, really did his stuff last night you know he took his goals extremely well and you've got to give Spurs again full credit for sticking at it sticking at it sticking at it to get in there so again, that comeback, was that, a, was that a mental thing that once the first goal went in, Ajax wilted? Or were there actually players in that Tottenham team after half-time that said, you know what, this is a Champions League semi-final, this is our moment, no. I'm going to take control of this situation? I think, I think that would come from Pochettino at half-time to, 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 to do what they needed to do. It comes from the manager, Ned, and of course the players have to go out and they have to have the will to do it. But it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, there are players that he's had there for the last two or three years that he can trust. You know, players that he couldn't trust obviously have gone. So these are players that, under these circumstances, he knows he can trust. They've done it before in certain ways, not quite as dramatically as last night, but he knows they were capable of doing it. And he, he had to keep his nerve as well to do what needed to be done, to keep the belief there, to keep doing the right things, which they did. So it's all down to management and players. I mean, a great manager with bad players is not going to do much good, and vice versa. Mm. So it was a good team effort all round and I think the inexperience of Ajax really showed in the second half when other teams would have tied up the game at, at that particular stage at half time and they were still go 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 for the goal they hit the upright might have finished it off had another couple of chances that might have, hap might have happened but didn't uh, and I'd have to say that the, 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 in the second half I think the left back you have Maybe to bring it was definitely a weakness Nathan, definitely, even for the last goal, he lost Murray. He was a weakness, he was a weakness for it. But anyway, uh, you know, that, that's inexperience. But I think they had the attitude, Alex, that, and maybe didn't have the players, any of the players, to be able to tie up that mm. game. 
You know, because goals the tight matches, Nathan, and you see in the really, really top great teams, they got three three nil up at half time. They they're, they're not going to lose it. They can play. You know, goals to take the game. So if you're three up, you can play in a certain way to tie the game up if you have the players to do it. And then if you have to go to get the three yeah. goals, then it's a different way altogether. But certainly the top teams, in my opinion, over the years, if they go three up, Nathan, they're not going to lose it. They wouldn't. They won't look like scoring themselves again, yeah. but they're not going to... You can play in a certain way. I was wondering, has that actually changed over the last two or three years? Because these type of comebacks are happening all the time in the Champions League. And even that game between Manchester City and Tottenham in the quarter-final, like Manchester City, you would think, have so much experience at this stage that they should be able to control a game when they, when they get themselves in a decent position. But it was just chaos. It just seems to be this constant chaos of attack, attack, attack. Well, yeah, I, 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 actually, I think there's, there's a lack of what we call midfield generals now. I think De Bruyne, De Bruyne play against... Uh, uh, he, he's capable of controlling the game. But you don't see... Like a Graham Sinesse or a Modric around now, where uh, these guys can spot this game is going against us to get a grip of the ball, a few simple passes here and there, mm. which which takes the the, the 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 buzz out of the game. You know that's all management of the game. I think there are less midfield players around of that caliber that can do that. I mean, if you take uh, uh, Spurs themselves, Spurs don't have a midfield general. Ericsson's not a midfield, he's a good midfield player and a few good midfield players, but there's nobody on that team you could say, oh, he got a grip of the game. And certainly in, in Ajax, they didn't have anybody yeah. that could get a grip of the game. So it's all or nothing. And he says they don't want that. Do you think if Pochettino had the option of bringing Luka Modric back to the club, he would take him? Oh, like, yeah. Do you think he's looking out, or maybe Modric isn't the example, but do you think he's looking around this summer going, I want that midfield general? Yeah, or does but, he just want this no, no, constant no, no, energy? No, no, he would have Modric back tomorrow. But where are they? Mm. Do you know what I mean, Nathan? Where are they now? Like, if you look at Modric, Modric comes to mind straight away. But when you look around the whole World Cup last year, who had the the midfield general in 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 in, in the Modric? Like, Modric? Modric carried Croatia yeah. lot into that final. Without Modric, there wouldn't have been a team a team at all, in my opinion. A lot, a lot of good, honest players. But when you look around, even the Premiership, you know, if I said to you, okay, pick out a midfield general in the in the, the whole of the Premiership, whether it be Manchester United. Manchester De Bruyne does it better than anybody else when he's doing it. Liverpool, Fabinho could do it. He's better now than he was. But they didn't have anybody at all doing that particular role. And those particular players, soon that's when he was playing. If they got two goals up, you can, as they say in the game, you can smell the danger, right? You can smell it and you think, OK, I've got to get a grip of the ball. A pass here, a pass there, a pass there. Just slow it down. And if you're nobody to do that, then the opposition are at you and at you and at you. Like like the like Spurs were at uh, Ajax last night. And why do you think that is? Why do you think that player seems to be drifting out of the game? I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know the answer to that. It's a big answer. I mean, the the, the what I, what I see in the game a lot is, and I know from experience that you know, uh, skill and that is way down the list on a lot of the coaches' thing. It's it's box to box, box to box, and and my take on it is that the coaches when they're young, most of the midfield players. Uh, are quite skillful, small guys, mm. uh, and I think in, at the lower levels in school by football, I think the the coaches have become too prominent in in themselves to encourage the young players. Like the young kids, I've, I've seen it myself. Young player, a skillful midfield player, will make more mistakes than anybody else. So the coach in, on the under nines, tens, the little guy makes a mistake, right off, off you come. Yeah, put the big guy on. They go on and win the match. And the coach is the winning coach. And I think that the, the, the skillful kid, by the time he's 14, has had enough of it. They're not enjoying it anymore. That's what I, That's one of the things I think is, 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 is stopping it. Yeah, I'm reminded of a st- statistic, and maybe it's not a good example considering what happened in the game on Tuesday night, but in the first leg for Barcelona, Lionel Messi's pass percentage success rate was 50%, mm. whereby you know, he gave the ball away half the time. Mm. But it was obviously trying so many different things at different times. Well, it's like it's only like him to do that, uh, now because what, what you say he's trying to do. Lot, the great thing that makes Messi great is not trying things that he's not giving the ball away. And you have to go back to that particular match. Messi, up to the time he scored his, the first goal, 
wasn't actually in the game. He wasn't having one of his best games. Now, the papers got mad, which, which, you know, which is understandable, that he did change the game. But in his general play in the whole match, it wasn't a messy performance. As you say, he's only 50% of his, of his, his passing. But he was, he was dramatic because he scored a goal and he scored a, the, the, that would grab the headlines in the paper. But I've seen Messi play better in matches than he did without you know, just scoring ordinary, yeah. ordin, ordinary, ordinary goals. So even Messi can, can do it. But if, like Messi's not a midfield player, Nathan. He's a striker. But you see, if you go back to Barcelona at the best, he had Xavi... Iniesta, mm. those guys, could, particularly Xavi, could control the game from the middle of the field. You know, really control the game. And, and he'd be the type of player, right, we're 2-0 up, oh, this is looking a bit dangerous, I better get the ball, a couple of little passes here and there. This slows the game down and, and, and that's how you, you see out the game. But they don't have a Xavi anymore. They don't have an Iniesta. Nobody has. So then it's more helter-skelter. In other words, you, you, you have to be able to control the game at different so, uh, players in that position, if it's Modric, if you're okay, if you're losing one nil, then you have to play. You have to take more chances in doing it. If you're winning one nil and it's looking a bit, dark, give me the ball, hold it, give me it back to me, give yeah. me here a ball here. Take this, take the, the sting out of the game. You're quite right. Would 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 Patelino have Modric? Definitely. Where are the Modric's? There's very few of them around. Nathan. You don't have an Iniesta and 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 uh, Xavi. That's why Barcelona, not the team, at the best. I think a few years ago when Iniesta and Xavi. I think there would have been a good chance they could would have controlled. Oh, you'd have that to game. think though. Yeah, well, if you look at the midfield of of of, of Barcelona today, yeah. who, who have they got in midfield? Yeah, it's Nathan, Rakitic and Artur Vidal and Busquets. So Busquets is obviously yeah. the one remaining. Yeah, but none of the none of those both. three are going to control the game. Yeah. You know, they, they they're good at what they do, but they're not an Iniesta and they're certainly not a Xavi. Does Busquets not have that? No. sort of ability. No, not at all. Nowhere near. Just doesn't have the range of passing. No. Doesn't have the mentality. Doesn't have the skill to. to well, he might, he might have the skill to read the game. Say we need to do something about it, but he hasn't got the ability to do anything about it. He is what he is. He's a good. He's a good player. But when you talk about Xavi and Iniesta, Modric, these are guys who see it. Sunes in, in, in his day. Uh, I can't think of anybody else at, at, at that particular time. But Sunes was outstanding for for Liverpool. Uh, well, Skulls, Skulls did it. To be fair, Manchester United at the best. He, like he could do it in a way he could spot it more than Roy Keane could you know Roy Keane could do what he did which was destroy the opposition break it up and that but Scholes was the one who would say give me the ball pass here pass there take the sting out of it mm. see it out does Deli Ali potentially have that no he's not, he doesn't do it at all at all he doesn't have the discipline to do it Nathan you see him have a kick at the fella last night mm. even. like Deli Ali's a bit of a, a bit of a pup and is talented pup, yeah. but he doesn't have the mentality to do what's needed to be done in certain situations, not to control it. He'll play his part, he's a very talented lad, very, very talented lad, but he wouldn't spot it, or even if he did spot the game, that he wouldn't be able to, he, can't, he hasn't got the, the ability to do that. Mm. Like, he, he plays midfield, like Ericsson is the same. They're playing in midfield, but they're not controlling the game. They're part of the game. Yeah, they're sort of they're not, There's a difference between controlling it and playing your part. Did he not do something slightly different in the second half? Was there not a sense that he wanted to take a bit more control of what was happening? Who, of Deli Alley? I don't know. I think it was where the game fell. You know, you see, they didn't have the experience to tie it up. Mm. So therefore, it's, it's looser. Now he can come into it the same as anybody else. There's a difference between dictating it and being a part of it. Nice. You know, Deli Alley won't control it. Ericsson won't control it. They'll be a part of it. But if you go back to, to, to Ajax, they say Ajax had a Modric in there or a Sunes in there, right? Deli Ali and Ericsson wouldn't have got as much of the ball. That's what these guys do. They're part of it. Ericsson is part of it. Talented lad. Deli's talented lad. But not dictating it. Sunes was obviously that good. Yeah. Because I don't remember him playing and you see the videos yeah. on YouTube and any highlights video of Graeme Sunes is him flying into challenges and clattering people and yeah. tough as nails. But technically, when he had the ball, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, he could, he could read it. He could, uh, he, he did that as well, uh, Graeme. He was a tough, he was a tough guy. But Graeme could, could notice when the game is going against you. Give me the ball, and then, and sometimes it's only ten yard here, ten yard there. It takes the sting out of the game. But you have to have the mentality to recognise that. See, when you when you when you're playing in a game, the game of all different phases. You're two nil up, right? Does a certain thing happen? And like a Sunes or Modric, 
that's not good. Give me the ball. Pass here, pass there, pass there. You know, they, can, they recognize it. As he, the Graham said, well, you can smell it. You know, you can yeah. smell it coming. So they recognize it. And most players don't recognize it. And if they do recognize it, they haven't got the ability to do anything about it. Whereas a Modric can recognize it, Sunes can recognize it, because there's different points. You go 2 0 up. Goals, they take games. Now you can play in a certain way. No chances, give it here, give it there, give it there. And the opposition get a little bit anxious. Then you, you nick through and get it, st- steal another one. Mm. But what you're saying, in effect, you're not going to get one. If it's going to be 2 0, it's going to end 2 0. Can you teach that? Um, like, can you I, pick out, say, somebody like Declan Rice is probably one of the best, seen as one of the best young midfield players in England and has mm. been linked with Manchester United and Manchester mm. City. If he goes to the right club, if he works with Pep Guardiola, can Guardiola teach him? Yeah, I think, I think, he, I think Rice, if you're talking about Rice now in particular. Or any young good midfielder yeah, like well, that. I think Rice has the uh, mentality to do it. I'm not so sure he has the ability to do it. There's two different... That's why they're, they're so scarce, these mis- midfield players. Some, some have, the, have the, 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 the ability to do it on the ball, but don't have the mental ability to know when to do it, and vice versa. That's why they're special, that's why they're special players. I think it's a bit unfair for people to talk about Suness. I don't mean you, Nathan, to say he clawed it. He did. He got stuck in already. And he wasn't... But I think more that actually it's a shame that my generation, that's... The sort of that's what's filtered down. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, yeah. that's what's filtered down about yeah. Graham Souness over yeah. the years. Yeah, well, that, that, I'd say that's definitely unfair. I actually played against Graham Souness uh, when he was at Middlesbrough, uh, and he, Graham could knew the game and could tell this is going against us. I'll get on the ball, the pass here and the pass there. Recognizing it is one thing. A lot of players don't recognize it. Graham could recognize it and do something about it. Now, he wasn't the quickest in the world, and, and he was aggressive. Yeah. So that's what you'd remember him being in trouble and a bit hot-headed at times. Uh, so he would get into trouble, but that, 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 that wouldn't be a fair, in my opinion, it wouldn't be a fair assist, assessment of his ability to do what needed to be done in the great Liverpool team. Because they had good players around, Zal Gleish as well, but Graham was the one in the midfield. Like, when you're playing in, in Tunis, uh, sorry, in, in a forward position like Dal Gleish, mm. you're too far forward to control the game, Nathan. Obviously, you can you you, you, can, you can control what you're, but to actually dictate the game is a different type of s- skill altogether and mentality. So you don't need to be that deepest lying midfielder. No, no, no. Because I think there's that impression now that that's that well, that, person's that's role. Become, you see, it's become fashionable the holding midfield player. Now I might we've I, I think it's a myth the holding midfield player. The best way to protect the game is to have the ball, mm. right? And in 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 in, in Graham Sinesta's place and Skulls. Scold's very much the, the, the successful Manchester now because you'd back him on one side, you'd, you'd ski keen on the other side, doing what they did. But it was Scold's that actually dictated the game. You know, it's a certain, it takes a certain amount of a certain ability and a certain mentality. Yeah. As far as it's knowledge of the game, this game has gone against us. What can I do? Right? First thing you do, get hold of the ball. Keep it. No, no fancy passes, no, just ball here, the ball there, take the sting out of it, and you're, you're running down the clock at the same time. And usually when you're winning in that position, the other team gets frustrated and start doing foolish things. Yeah. Right? Now we say, oh, we push the full back forward. Do well. Now you go and nick another goal. But you have to have the mentality to recognise that and then you have to have the ability to do it. If you're talking about young Rice, I think young Rice would have the mental ability to do it. I don't know whether he would have the physical ability as a player. He's a big lad, he's a terrific player. But whether he would have the control and the, of, a, of, a, of a Modric or a Suness or a Scholes, to, I would doubt Maybe I'd, I'd be wrong, but that's the way I would see it. could have the mentality, but wouldn't have the skill. The some of have the skill, don't have the mentality. Yeah, and when you think back to Sunes at that time, so when you would have been playing him at Middlesbrough, you would have been a young player, probably early 20s, you were in a position where you were one of the best midfielders in English football, and he's just starting out. He's probably still seven, eight years away from getting to that level. Did you recognise at that oh, time? Yeah. Well, you, you, what, what happens in that situation, you can, you can recognise what he's trying to do. Right. He wouldn't have the experience, but you can recognise that he's trying to. And he had the experience as well. I don't know he was that young when I played against him. Uh, but, uh, but you could tell he, he, he had that, uh, what they call it, personality now. You know, the foreign, the foreign coaches, everything is personality. Got, Graham had the personality and the confidence to do what needed to be done. 
It's a very, very mature position. Graham, you see, was released by Spurs. So Graham went to Middlesbrough, learned his trade really at Middlesbrough before he went to Liverpool. So when he went to Liverpool, he was ready for it, playing with good players. And Graham, it takes time to do it, Nathan, you know, yeah. to, to learn. It's, it's one thing having the ability to do it, but it's just thing having the will to do it. Yeah, that's why that's uh, what he learned. Uh, a word of warning for Declan Rice if he's thinking about leaving West Ham this summer to maybe bide his time and learn his game. We'll talk a lot more about the Champions League yeah. final I, I, over I, the next few weeks. To Rice. I, I don't think he's right, a terrific player. I don't think he'll ever get to that, into that position. Uh, right. I, I think he'll be a top-class midfield player, uh, but I don't think he'll have the creative ability to step into that role. I, I doubt it very much. Just briefly on this Sunday, the final day of the season, Manchester City have to slip up or Liverpool don't mm. have a hope. Obviously, they've won 13 games in a row now, Manchester City. They've never been behind in any of those 13 games, so they've yeah. never had that bit of pressure. Any glimmer of hope for Liverpool I at all? I think so. I, I, I think, uh, like some people said, uh, right now, you know, they're, 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 they'd be better off if they were fighting against relegation. They're out. I don't think so. I think there's less pressure on them. And they're a dogged bunch. You saw them against Arsenal mm -hmm. last week. They were good. You know, Chris has them well organised. I don't think it'll be an easy game for Because all the managers, they'll have a go. They'll have a go. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, like, obviously Liverpool have to do their stuff against Wolves. But they are playing at home and they've got their tails up, mm -hmm. as we know. Uh, I think City have it more difficult on paper. On paper. Uh, but... Um, I, I wouldn't rule it out. I definitely wouldn't rule it out. I think Brighton will be dogged and City have to really do their stuff. Yeah. It's a great race. I mean, you'd have yeah, to say, whoever, whoever finished second is very, very unlucky and they've made a great race of it between the pair of them. Yeah, and we'll have full coverage on Sundays off the ball. Myself and John Walters will be at Anfield for Liverpool's game. Full updates from Brighton as well. John, great to have you in for the football show. Thanks, Nathan. We'll talk about it all on next Thursday evening's off the ball. Off the ball on News Talk. Everyone shouts about how fast their broadband is. We're fast, mega fast, stupid fast, almost too fast. But what do they say about reliability? With Virgin Media, you get both. Ireland's fastest broadband network and 99.9% .9 network reliability. Reliability at speed. See virginmedia.ie. Terms and conditions apply. Ireland's fastest broadband network as awarded by Ookla. Network reliability. See virginmedia.ie forward slash proof. Life is for living, so embrace that Irish spirit of adventure. At FBD, we're here to protect you. If you have a home policy with us, we'll give you a 10% discount on your car insurance. For a quote, call 017-617-617 or visit fbd.ie. FBD Insurance. Protection. It's in our nature. 10% car discount available with an existing FBD home policy. Acceptance criteria, terms and conditions apply. Underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. FBD Insurance Group Limited Trading as FBD Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Ever wondered where standards come from? If you're involved in innovation, you probably have. And the simple answer is, they're developed by people like you. NSAI is the National Standards Authority of Ireland. When we're developing a new standard or updating an existing one, your expertise is invaluable. So you can help influence the direction of your industry and be among the first to hear about new developments. If you'd like to participate, visit nsai.ie today or call 01 807 3800. That's 01 807 3800. If you want an appliance and you want it delivered, hello! There's only one place to go. Appliancesdelivered.ie, of course. Washing machines, TVs, fridges, freezers, barbecues, laptops and much, much more. It's our biggest ever range of products. All the best prices in Ireland, guaranteed. Like a higher American fridge freezer, just $699.95. The Montpellier Compact Tumble Dryer, $129.95. Or a Salter Whole Fruit Juicer, delicious value, at $19.95. These offers are for a limited time only. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. You're welcome back. So Arsenal are through to the final of the Europa League. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has scored a hat-trick, a 4-2 win on the night against Valencia. 7-3 on aggregate. Arsenal go through to the final in Baku in just under three weeks' time. Who will they play in the final, though? Well, we'll have to wait and see because Chelsea and Eintracht Frankfurt has gone to extra time. It's finished one all on the night, two all on aggregate. Ruben Loftus-Cheek put Chelsea in front in the first half. But just like in the first leg, Luka Jovic scored for Eintracht Frankfurt. So that game is heading 
for extra time can Eintracht Frankfurt break the stranglehold of the English clubs in these European finals. Richie will be along just after 10 with an update on all the day's football results. We're back though tomorrow morning live from 7.45 as always. It's OTB AM, the Sports Breakfast Show, live on offtheball.com, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. Adrian and Owen will be along in the morning. Uh, make sure to check out all our social channels for full broadcast details. Back on the radio tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, we've got Ronan O'Gara talking about what it's like to prepare and take part in a Heineken Champions Cup final, the crappy quiz and Friday Night Racing with Johnny Ward and up-and-coming trainer Jack Davison. All our good stuff's up on offtheball.com. Tom Dunn is up next. Good luck. Give him a ball and he out of grass. He'll give you a move for the perfect pass. Give him a ball and he out of spite.